Hello friends and welcome back to a new video. Today I will be sharing with you all a very special spring haul. I'm sure the majority of you know that I haul books fairly frequently, but there are a few different types of items that I never share when I do get them. That includes mugs and coloring books and puzzles. And besides reading, some of my favorite hobbies include puzzling and coloring and also collecting mugs. So I thought in today's video, I would share some of the recent items, I guess, that I got in honor of the new spring season. I'm a very seasonal person in many ways, and as each season rolls around, I like to buy puzzles and mugs and basically anything that just makes me feel like I'm welcoming the season with open arms and it makes me even more excited for the new season. And so without further ado, let's get started with a couple coloring books that I have recently purchased. So the two coloring books that I got are Country Kitchen Charm and Spring Scenes, and these are both from the Creative Haven brand and the artist for all of these books I'm pretty sure it's just one artist and her name is Teresa Goodridge. It's safe to say this is my new favorite brand. These illustrations are absolutely stunning. They're some of the coziest illustrations that I've ever seen. I actually started the Spring Scenes book the day that I got it in the mail. I was just so excited and it is just so so fun. Coloring is one of the most therapeutic hobbies that I have come across and absolutely fallen in love with and the Creative Haven brand is just incredible. Amazon has a lot of the Creative Haven coloring books and I honestly want to get them all but that's not possible at this point. Creative Haven has a lot of seasonal coloring books as well so there are summer ones, there are ones that are for autumn and winter and Christmas and they even have some that are color by number which I absolutely love and I think it's great if you struggle with picking colors for the various coloring pages. I'm just so excited about these books and if you haven't heard of Darling Desi, she is an amazing amazing YouTuber. She has an incredible channel and I actually heard about these books from her channel so I'm just so so excited to have these and like I said I've already completed one within the Spring Scenes book and I can't wait to try out the Country Kitchen Charm as well. Another hobby of mine is of course puzzling and so I have a couple puzzles to share as well. The first one here is called Garden Path and this is a 500 piece puzzle from the Gallison brand. The Gallison brand is one of my absolute favorites. I adore every single one of their puzzles that I have done. They also have a lot of puzzles that fit the different seasons and this one just screams spring to me so I needed to get my hands on it. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love every single little detail and I'm just so excited to work on this puzzle. And then the second puzzle I have here is already one of my absolute favorite puzzles on planet earth. I am absolutely obsessed with it and that is this tea time puzzle from the Cobble Hill puzzle brand. This is 1000 pieces and I just don't have words. I am absolutely obsessed. I cannot get enough of this puzzle just looking at it. This is one that I wanna work on and then glue and hang it up on the wall. But at the same time, I don't want to because I wanna be able to do it again and again. It's just so beautiful. I honestly just can't get enough of it. And yeah, I just, I can't wait to work on it. So if you guys don't know, I'm absolutely obsessed with Peter Rabbit. All things Peter Rabbit, the stories, the illustrations, it just makes me feel so nostalgic and cozy. And my sister was recently on a trip and she knows how much I love Peter Rabbit. And she found these mugs and plates secondhand, which I'm just so, so thrilled about. They're honestly some of the cutest things that I've ever seen. And like, I'm almost scared to use them and break them. I just, I love them so much. The first two items here don't actually go together, but I use them together and I think they pair very, very nicely. The first one here is a plate and it says, Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea one tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. This is one of the cutest plates I have ever seen in my life. And then along with the plate, I like to use this Peter Rabbit mug. It has become one of my favorite mugs to drink coffee out of. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. It is so, so cute. I already love rabbits as it is, but this being Peter Rabbit just makes it even more adorable. And then these next two items are actually a set. And my sister again found these secondhand, which is absolutely incredible. They're also both Bone China, which I absolutely adore. And so we have this adorable, adorable little mug and it comes with this plate bowl i'm not quite sure but this is something i picture using to feed like a baby or a toddler it's just so so cute honestly it's the little things in life that make me very happy and these are just some of the most precious things i have ever received as a gift and i'm so grateful to my sister 
She did a great job at the thrift store. <laughs> and moving on, it would not be a haul without books to share. I feel like almost every single book that I have in this haul feels either spring or summery. And I feel like these books have a very specific vibe and it's kind of hard to explain until I start going through them. So I have 12 physical books and then I have three on Kindle. I'll quickly go over the three on Kindle first. So we first have The Cryptographer's Dilemma, and this is World War II historical Christian fiction, and it says, FBI cryptographer Eloise Marshall is grieving the death of her brother, who died during the attack on Pearl Harbor, when she is assigned to investigate a seemingly innocent letter about dolls. Agent Philip Clayton is ready to enlist and head overseas when asked to work one more FBI job. A case of coded defense coordinates related to dolls should be easy, but not so when the Japanese consulate gets involved. Hearts get entangled and Philip goes missing. Can Eloise risk loving and losing again? I've heard really good things about it. I heard it's really underrated, so I'm definitely excited to try it out. And then the other two Kindle books are the first two books in the Somerset Stories by Mimi Matthews. So I had read A Holiday by Gaslight by Mimi Matthews around Christmas time and absolutely fell in love with her writing. I adored that book so much. It's more of a novella. And these two books were on Kindle for 99 cents. I had to get them. And if I end up falling in love with them, I will probably get physical books as well. I'll read the summary for the first book, just not the second one because it is a second in a series and I'm not sure if there would be spoilers. So the first one's called The Work of Art and it says, Hidden away in rural Devonshire, Phyllida Satterthwaite has always been considered more odd than beautiful. But in London, her oddity has made her a sensation. Far worse, it's caught the eye of the sinister Duke of Moreland, a notorious art collector obsessed with acquiring one-of-a-kind treasures. To escape the Duke's clutches, she's going to need a little help. Captain Arthur Haywood's days of heroism are long past. Grievously injured in the Peninsular War, he can no longer work, walk unaided, let alone shoot a pistol. What use can he possibly be to a damsel in distress? He has nothing left to offer except his good name. Can a marriage of convenience save Philly from the vengeful Duke? Or will life with Arthur put her and her heart in more danger than ever? This book sounds like it'll be a really good time and I just cannot wait to read another Mimi Matthews book. And the second book in this series is Gentleman Jim. So I have these two on Kindle and I'm very, very much excited to read more of this author. So moving on to the physical books that I got, a lot of these I actually got secondhand, which I'm really, really happy about. And the first one here is On Her Majesty's Frightfully Secret Service by Reese Bowen. This I believe is book 11 in the Her Royal Spinous Mystery series. And I've only read the first two books, but I have quite a few in the series and some of them I have that are later on in the series and so I'm kind of filling in the blanks as I am able to find the books and I try to find them secondhand if I can. This one I did and I'm really really excited because it is hardcover and I love this cover so so much. I'm not going to read the summary because it is later in the series but I'm very very excited about this find. This next one is by an author that I have read from before and I have very mixed feelings about her books and her writing and everything but I do want to give her another chance and so now I have a couple more of her books that I can pick from and see if I end up liking either of them, but this one is The Rose Code by Kate Quinn. Like I said, I have read Kate Quinn and I enjoyed one of her books, but another one I DNF'd. So I'm not sure how I will feel about this one. And I also have another one by her, I just forget what it's called, but I do want to give her another chance. And again, this was secondhand, it was very, very cheap. So decided to grab it. And this one says, 1940, as England prepares to fight the Nazis, three very different women answer the call to mysterious country estate Bletchley Park where the best minds in Britain train to break German military codes. Vivacious debutante Osla has everything, beauty, wealth, and the dashing Prince Philip of Greece sending her roses. But she burns to prove herself as more than a society girl and puts her fluent German to use as a translator of decoded enemy secrets. Imperious, self-made Mab, a product of East End London poverty, works the legendary code-breaking machines as she conceals old wounds and looks for a socially advantageous husband. Both Osla and Mab are quick to see the potential in local village spinster Beth, whose shyness conceals a brilliant facility with puzzles. And soon, Beth spreads her wings as one of the park's new female cryptanalysts. But war, loss, and the impossible pressure of secrecy will tear the three apart. And then we have 1947. As the royal wedding of Princess Elizabeth and Prince Philip whips post-war Britain into a fever, the three friends-turned-enemies are reunited by a mysterious encrypted letter, the key to which lies buried in the long-ago betrayal that destroyed their friendship and left one of them confined to an asylum. An enigmatic traitor has emerged from the shadows of their Bletchley Park past, and now Osla, Mab, and Beth must resurrect their old alliance and crack one last code together. 
but each petal they remove from the rose code brings danger and their true enemy closer. That sounds very interesting, very intriguing, so I'm hopeful that this is one I will enjoy. I have a couple more World War II era books. This next one here is The Black Swan of Paris by Karen Roberts. This one I haven't heard too much about. I haven't seen a lot of people talking about it on booktube or on goodreads but i am really really curious so it says paris 1944 celebrated singer genevieve dumont is both a star and a smokescreen an unwilling darling to the nazis the chanteuse I, I cannot read french the blanks position of privilege allows her to go undetected as an ally to the resistance when her estranged mother lillian de Roch rochford is captured by nazis Genevieve knows it won't be long before the Gestapo succeeds in torturing information out of Lillian that will derail the upcoming Allied invasion. The resistance movement is tasked with silencing her by any means necessary, including assassination. There may be seven bitter years of distance between Genevieve and her family, but she refuses to let her mother become yet one more victim of the war. Reuniting with her long-lost sister, she must find a way to navigate the perilous cross-currents of occupied France undetected, and in time to save Lillian's life. This actually sounds very, very intriguing, and I'm even more curious now especially because it has a mother-daughter relationship type of dynamic so very very curious this next book also has to do with code breaking just like the rose code and that is the code breaker secret by sarah ackerman this one i have heard very good things about and it is dual timeline so we have 1943 as war in the pacific rages on isabel cooper and her code breaker colleagues huddle in the dungeon at station hypo in pearl harbor deciphering secrets plucked from the airwaves in a race to bring down the enemy Isabel has only one wish, to avenge her brother's death, but she soon finds her life has other plans when she meets his best friend, a hotshot pilot with secrets of his own. And then 1965, fledgling journalist Lou Freitas comes home to Hawaii to cover the grand opening of the glamorous Mauna Kea Beach Hotel, Rockefeller's newest and grandest project. When a high profile guest goes missing, Lou forms an unlikely alliance with an intimidating veteran photographer to unravel the mystery. The two make a shocking discovery that stirs up memories and uncovers an explosive secret from the war days, a secret that only a code breaker can crack. I don't think I've ever read a book set in Hawaii, so I'm very, very excited. And it's been a hot minute since I've read a really good World War II historical fiction, so I am hoping this is a good one. Next up, we have The House at Riverton by Kate Morton. The only book I've read by Kate Morton is The Forgotten garden i think it's called the forgotten garden and it's been so long i think i was maybe 14 or 15 when i read it i don't even have it recorded on goodreads as read i honestly don't remember anything about that book but i do remember that i fairly enjoyed it and i just haven't ever picked up a kate morton since but this one was at the thrift store and it sounds very interesting so this one says grace bradley was just a girl when she began working as a servant at riverton house for years her life was inextricably tied up with the glamorous and eccentric hartford family's daughters hannah and emmeline then, at a glittering society party in the summer of 1924, a young poet shot himself. The only witnesses were Hannah and Emmeline, and only they and Grace knew the dark truth. Many years later, when Grace is living out her last days in a nursing home, she receives a visit from a young director who is making a film about the events of that summer. The director takes Grace back to Riverton House and reawakens her memories of the last days of Edwardian aristocratic privilege, of the vibrant 20s, and of a stunning secret that Grace kept all her life. So I'm assuming this is like a dual timeline mystery and I'm very, very intrigued. So looking forward to this. This next book is one that I purchased with the purpose of fulfilling the April and May challenges for Oshina's Christian Romance Reading Challenge. And the April one was to read a five-star romance prediction. And then the May one was to read a new release. I didn't really have any like recent releases that are Christian romance that would fit the May, I guess, prompt. And so I decided to buy this book and it did come out in 2023. And I'm also considering this to be a five-star prediction. I think this is a book that I will absolutely adore and I'm really, really hoping I do. And that is In Spotlight and Shadow by Rachel Scott McDaniel. So like I said, this is going to be the book that I read for April and May for Oshina's reading challenge. And this book is part of a series called Doors to the Past. And I'm pretty sure each book in the series is written by a different author. And I believe you don't have to read them in order. I don't think there are characters that are in multiple books. I may be wrong about that, but I do know you can read them out of order. So like I said, this one is a five-star prediction and a new release. And this says, Elise Malvern has a habit of letting people down. Her former former boyfriend who hoped she'd be his bride, her grandfather who hoped she'd take over the family's auction company, but mostly she disappointed herself. What's the point of pursuing her passion as a violinist if she's too scared to audition for a seat in the Pittsburgh Symphony? Her internship at the elegant Heinz Hall places her in the wings of the stage, but never on it. 
By accident, she discovers an old stage prop. Her instincts tell her there's more to the paste necklace than meets the eye. She accepts help from a childhood friend who happens to be country music megastar Pearson Brooks. Pearson and Elise share a history, one she doesn't care to repeat. The more involved they become in the mystery, the more things get tangled, including her heart. And then it says, a century earlier, Sophie Walters longs for center stage. Having spoiled all her chances in Hollywood, she returns to Pittsburgh, accepting an insignificant role in a popular production. She watches her dreams pass by from behind the curtain at the illustrious Lowe's Penn Theater. When she finally gets the coveted spotlight, it's not for her talent. No, her search to fame is all one terrible mistake. Somehow, she's suspected to be a notorious jewel thief known around Pittsburgh as the Mirage. The man she pleads to for help is none other than the man she jilted at the altar five years before, Sterling Monroe. This is one of those books that I have heard nothing but praise for, and it has great reviews on Goodreads, and I'm really, really hoping it is a five-star read for me. Honestly, I'll be happy if it's even like a four, four and a half star. I just hope I really, really love it. This next book, when it came in the mail, I almost squealed. I was so, so excited to get it in my hands. And that is Return to Boone's Hollow by Kim Vogel Sawyer. I adored The Librarian of Boone's Hollow, which is the first book in this duology. And that was one of my favorite books of 2022. And I just could not wait to get my hands on this. This one follows a character from The Librarian of Boone's Hollow who was very difficult to like. She was not the greatest of people, but I think that in this book, we're gonna see a lot of healing and I just cannot wait to read this. I'm so, so excited. I won't read the summary for it just because it is the second book in a duology, but I'm just so excited. Next, we have Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. If you don't know, Rebecca Ross is one of my favorite fantasy authors. She's an auto-buy author for me. I adore her books. This one is a YA standalone. So I'm very, very intrigued. And it says, after centuries of sleep, the gods are warring again. But 18-year-old Iris Winnow just wants to hold her family together. Her mother is suffering from addiction and her brother is missing from the front lines. Her best bet is to win the columnist promotion at the Oath Gazette. To combat her worries, Iris writes letters to her brother and slips them beneath her wardrobe door, where they vanish into the hands of Roman Kitt, her cold and handsome rival at the paper. When he anonymously writes Iris back, the two of them forge a connection that will follow Iris all the way to the front lines of battle for her brother, the fate of mankind, and love. Divine Rivals is an epic enemies to lovers fantasy novel filled with hope and heartbreak and the unparalleled power of love. I am a sucker for enemies to lovers and I cannot wait to read this. This next book is a tiny little mystery. It is less than 200 pages. It's very, very short. And that is Murder in Fullbridge Village, a 1920s mystery by Jay Gill. And this is the first book in the Henry Fleming Investigates mystery series. And like I said, it is very short, a very tiny little cozy mystery. First of all, this cover is gorgeous. I am obsessed. Dream home right there. I love this. Oh my goodness. Anyways, so <laughs> this says, a village full of secrets, a quaint English fete, a shocking murder. In 1920s England, private detective Henry Fleming is visiting his friend, retired author Lily Riley, in the quintessentially English village of Fullbridge. Tragedy strikes when a resident is murdered, stabbed through the heart in the historic local church. When an inexperienced Scotland Yard detective arrives to investigate the case, Lily is accused of the terrible crime. With no sign of a murder weapon and no obvious motive, Fleming realizes it will fall to him to prove his friend's innocence and solve the baffling case. That sounds perfect. Perfect cozy mystery and I cannot wait to give this a try. This next book is hands down one of my favorite books of all time. I read it in March and I had borrowed it from the library and I needed my own copy because like I said, it's a favorite book. It is a favorite middle grade. I wanna pick it up again, like right now and read it from cover to cover. I adored this book so, so much. And that is A Place to Hang the Moon by Kate Albus. If you love middle grade and if you love historical fiction, this book is a must read. It was incredible so heartwarming. It has a really short blurb on the back and I'll just read that because it's a very nice summary rather than me trying to explain what the book is about. It says, a heartwarming story about three siblings evacuated from London to the countryside during World War II who are hoping that a temporary living situation will turn into a forever family. If you want to hear more of my thoughts about this book, I'll leave my mid-month wrap-up for March below. That's where I talked a lot about how much I adored this book and you need to read this book. It's incredible. All right, so I have two more books to share. First here we have Entwined by Heather Dixon. One of my absolute favorite books from 2022 is The Enchanted Sonata, and it is by this author. I adored that book so much. It's a retelling of The Nutcracker, and this one I believe is a retelling of The Twelve Dancing Princesses. I could be totally wrong on that. I'll have to look it up and make sure that I'm right, but 
I'm pretty sure it is a retelling of that fairy tale and I've heard nothing but good things about this book as well. I heard it's very whimsical and super magical and I'm so so excited to read it and this one says come and mend your broken hearts here. Just when Azalea should feel that everything is before her, beautiful gowns, dashing suitors, balls filled with dancing, it's taken away. All of it. And Azalea is trapped. The keeper understands. He's trapped too, held for centuries within the walls of the palace. So he extends an invitation. Every night, Azalea and her eleven sisters may step through the enchanted passage in their room to dance in his silver forest, but there's a cost. The keeper likes to keep things. Azalea may not realize how tangled she is in his web until it is too late. Like I said, I've only heard good things. I'm pretty sure this is also YA fantasy, like fairy tale retelling, and I cannot wait to read it. And then last but not least, we have Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, a novel by Heather Fawcett, and I literally cannot wait to read this book. I plan on picking it up sometime in April or May. From the minute I heard about this book, I wanted to read it. It just sounds so, so good. And this one says, Cambridge professor Emily Wilde is a genius scholar who is writing the world's first encyclopedia of fairy lore. And Emily lives for her work. She emphatically prefers the company of her books, her dog Shadow, and the fair folk to other people. So when she arrives in a hard scrabble village in the far north, Emily wishes only to focus on her studies. She certainly doesn't have time for another new arrival, her dashing and insufferably handsome academic rival Wendell Bambleby, who manages to charm the townsfolk, muddle Emily's research, and utterly confound and frustrate her. But as Emily gets closer and closer to uncovering the secrets of the Hidden Ones, the most elusive of all fairies, lurking in the shadowy forest outside the town, she also finds herself on the trail of another mystery. Who is Wendell Bambleby? And what does he really want? To find the answer, she must unlock the greatest mystery of all, her own heart. This book I heard is just cottagecore, fairy, folklore, fae, whimsy, just an explosion of all of that. And I cannot wait to dive into this story. All right, everyone. So these are all the books that I have hauled along with the puzzles and the coloring books and the mugs and everything. But I don't know, I just feel like the books in particular have such a vibe <laughs> and just feel so perfect for the spring season. And I'm just so, so excited about each of these books and I'm so, so grateful for all of them. If you've read any of these books, I would love to know what your thoughts are. Even if you didn't enjoy them as much, I'm very, very curious to hear your thoughts. But that is it for this video. Thank you everyone so, so much for watching. I appreciate each of you for taking time out of your day to sit down and watch my videos. It means so, so much to me and I am very, very grateful. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.